Hi everyone, uh, my name is Mark McGill and I'm recording this talk for ECM IMX 2020 on our paper Augmenting TV Viewing Using Acoustically Transparent Auditory Headsets. So we're all incredibly familiar with headphones as the predominant means of personal audio delivery. However, this status quo is being disrupted by the advent of auditory headsets. So we now have hearables, which are ear-mounted wearable computer interfaces, earables, which are augmented earbuds, and intelligent headsets, all now capable of head orientation tracking, physiological sensing, contextual awareness, and so on. And this sensing can be packed into discrete wearable form factors. For example, here's a clip of a specialised podcast from a recent Kai paper, with head tracking provided via this headset's inertial measurement unit. Science couldn't leave it alone, could it? No. So, Galileo stuck his telescope in, spots some moon circling around Jupiter. So, one particular form of auditory headset of note is acoustically transparent headsets, the type this talk focuses on. So, this acoustic transparency refers to their capability to passively intermix real and virtual sounds. A number of such headsets have become uh, recently become available to consumers, such as the Bose Frames and the Amazon Echo Frames. Notably, these headsets represent quite an advancement in terms of personal audio, so they use directional speakers to provide higher fidelity uh, audio than bone conductance. They are wearable, arguably fashionable, uh, and they provide users with a personal private audio space, and they're not occlusive, so you can still theoretically hear the sounds of reality. Now, this potential uptake is what led us to consider the combination of acoustic transparency for personal audio combined with TV content. So acoustically transparent headwear could be exploited to personally and privately enhance the TV viewing experience for wearers without requiring the use of occlusive headphones which cut users off from the effective sounds and conversation of other viewers. Now research in this domain has been building toward augmented reality TV experiences, for example looking at cross device synchronization or visual augmented reality TV experiences. However, there are still challenges for visual AR in terms of the cost and potential consumer adoption of those kinds of experiences. Auditory augmented reality might be a more near-term reality given the dramatically lower cost of uh, existing consumer offerings and the comparative ease of augmentation. As such, we constructed a study looking at augmenting TV audio. We had one core assumption here, which was that video content was on a TV with the audio output on TV speakers and one or more viewers wearing acoustically transparent headsets, but crucially, not all viewers. So the result of this would be that some users would experience an intermixing of the TV audio and their headset audio. We came up with six scenarios of note uh, that would be possible here. Mirrored listening, so you can imagine privately listening to the 5.1 mix of the content downmix the stereo, giving you a personal, optimally spatialised audio experience, uh, regardless of your seating position in the room. Enhanced presence, so you could privately listen to the left and right channels of the 5.1 mix, giving a spatialised sense of atmosphere. Enhanced dialogue, so we could privately listen to the centre channel from the 5.1 mix, giving you the ability to control speech and dialogue volume independent of the TV speaker's volume, perhaps resolving household arguments over the volume control, for example. Uh, Rewatching movies, so a friend notes they've never seen The Shawshank Redemption before and you offer to watch it with them, despite having seen it multiple times. This time, however, you privately listen to the director's commentary. Visual impairments, you privately enable audio description, allowing you to better attend to events without altering the experience for other viewers. And even language barriers, so you sit down to watch Amelie with a French friend. Not wanting to disturb their experience, you privately listen to the dubbed English version that overlays the French version and eliminates the need for subtitles. So, to assess these kinds of scenarios, we built a prototype system using Unity and a pair of acoustically transparent Bose frames that allowed us to play video content on TV and selectively control what audio was sent to the TV and the frames with a high degree of synchronisation. And we wanted to examine both the perception of and utility of mirrored audio and uh, speech augmentations in a study. So firstly, regarding the perception of mirrored audio, um, we were looking at three different content types. Sport, uh, which is, we were using F1 as a clip for this. Uh, film, which was clips from Avengers Endgame. And documentary uh, content, which was Seven Worlds, One Planet. Uh, and each of these clips had an associated 5.1 audio track that we could downmix from. 
And crucially, with all of these 5.1 audio tracks, the speech came only from the centre channel, so we can selectively pick the left and right channels, which were the kind of environmental noise, and the centre channel, which was the dialogue. So for each of these content types, we looked at four conditions. TV only, which was all the audio uh, mix coming from the TV. TV plus frames front, left, right. So the full mix was coming from the TV, and then on the Bose frames, the user could hear the left and right channels of the 5.1 mix, the environmental noise, the kind of music. TV plus frames front center, so this is where the TV had the full mix and then the frames were playing the center channel of the 5.1 mix, so enhancing dialogue for example. And then mirrored, and this is where the TV and the frames were both playing the full 5.1 mix. So here's a clip demonstrating what it sounded like hearing the front left right channels of the 5.1 mix for the documentary content only. Contrast, this clip demonstrates hearing the centre. Australia, an island continent cast adrift during the time of the dinosaurs. And for the Formula One and film clips, just see our video. So I won't go into all the measures captured in this talk. Um, but to give you a brief overview, if we look at the user rankings of these conditions across content types, we found that any use of the frames for additional audio was largely preferred, uh, with mirrored and front channel, uh, front centre audio uh, largely equivalent. Uh, the results for the rankings were broadly mirrored in other measures, so for example enjoyment, and broadly personal audio usage here significantly improved the experience. Uh, in terms of spatial realism, for example, mirroring just the environmental left and right channels did significantly enhance the spatial realism of the TV experience. And the more of the audio mix is added to the frames, the more real the experience was perceived. Now, these results aren't entirely surprising, so we've got better personal 3D audio quality coming from the Bose frames, but they are confirmatory. So the frames and the TV audio could effectively operate alongside each other, with the frames user receiving a better personalised, synchronised audio experience. More broadly, in our interviews with users, participants were near universally in favour of using the frames for some form of synchronous audio delivery for the TV content. So participant 4 here saying, I was sitting here and I felt like I was in the cinema, or participant 6 saying, I thought the whole experience was incredible. Uh, intermixing also enhanced immersion, so Prisma 1 noted here, when you have the sound of the commentators through the frames, I felt like they were sitting with me on the couch. Or Prisma 6 saying you heard amazing sounds like the footsteps of the kind of ostrich emu thing in the documentary. Uh, intermixing also led to unique sensations of presence, so in this response the interviewee is talking about hearing the environmental audio on the frames with a full mix coming from the TV. Um, and they noted that it almost made me feel like I was out in the grandstands listening to the sounds of the cars first and then some piped in commentary from the tannoy or something. Uh, even though it was a bit less clear, it was way more immersive. Regarding the perception of speech augmentations, uh, we also looked at the potential for speech augmentations trialling three different types. Uh, audio description, so this is a clip from the Art of Scandinavia. Director's commentary, this is a clip from For Ragnarok with Taika Waititi's director commentary. And alternate language, so a clip from Alien presented in French on TV and English on the frames. For each of these, I'll play a clip of the augmentation. For each clip, you'll firstly hear the audio that would have been coming from the TV speakers, and then, subsequently, the personal audio coming out of the frames. Firstly, for director's commentary. <laughs> And alternate languages. <laughs> Still with us, Brett. Right. And audio description. But in that very same year, 
a group of Swedish writers had begun to expose the cracks running beneath this apparently ideal world. Two of these writers were the married couple. In that very same year, a group of Swedish writers had begun to expose the cracks running beneath this apparently ideal world. Stockholm at dusk. So, regarding the perception of speech augmentations, they were largely considered easy to attend to and well synchronized. For alternate languages, uh, five participants specifically noted how this might improve their viewing experience. Participant four here saying, I really like to watch movies in English, and my family doesn't understand English, so it would be awesome to watch it in English, and they could watch it with me, but in a different language. Um, regarding director's commentary, there was more muted responses, so with only two participants expressing a strong preference here. Participant three suggesting that where if you were watching a movie that you'd already seen before, and wanted your friends to watch it with you, then you could enjoy it to a different level. However, two participants equally expressed concerns that it might feel less communal if they're receiving a different experience. And for audio description, those that need audio description could listen to it without unduly altering the experience of others, and this was noted by seven participants. Participant five here saying, if it's purely because of the impairment, I wouldn't need to listen to it, and I wouldn't want to hear it. So, in summary, we found that TV content was more immersive and enjoyable with acoustically transparent augmentations. Augmentations that didn't meaningfully change the semantics of the content or experience were broadly favoured by our participants. And if wearable, personal, acoustically transparent audio was to see meaningful adoption by consumers, our users were largely and strongly in favour of its usage. However, there are many open questions here. So firstly, how to enable the production and delivery of personal TV audio. So here, work on object-based audio and clean audio will probably be paramount in, paramount in allowing people to customise what they hear selectively on their own personal audio headset. When is acoustic transparency actually acoustically transparent? So use in shared conversational settings is yet to be tested, and I can imagine there's multiple barriers here. So will the personal audio content overpower the environmental audio? And even if the volumes are appropriate, what about the cognitive and attentional demands? And what kind of interventions might we provide here to better enable shared social viewing whilst allowing for personal augmentation? How might we better exploit this new personal private audio channel? So our use cases were largely functional. Uh, we can imagine more creative uses, so for example, a murder mystery program delivering separate hints and clues to individuals in the room, or a horror movie that delivers different spatial effects to different viewers, enhancing fear or introducing a degree of unpredictability in repeat viewings. And what happens when everyone in the room has wearable audio like this? Do we alter our usage of the TV speaker so viewers can perhaps opt in to listening to the TV content? Thanks very much. Uh, that was our talk on augmenting TV viewing using acoustically transparent auditory headsets.